Hi, for the past uh, few video uh, demonstrations, I've been explaining how to deal with uh, descriptive analytics using R R Studio. It is just our programming language. R Studio is just an editor. I don't need to mention separately what is R Studio. Um, I am going forward to take up a particular area of uh, analytics called inferential statistics. Uh, inferential statistics is a little bit, uh, I mean, very close to a p uh, predictive analytics. In statistics, we call inferential statistics. In analytics, we call predictive analytics. Um, in this video, I am not straight away taking you to the predictive or inferential statistics. I am just going to deal with a particular concept called uh, coding. This coding and editing is one of the very important activity in uh, uh, data analytics. Uh, this activity is very much important uh, owing to one particular reason that the data most of the time will not be as expected. I'm just going to open a particular data set in my computer which we are going to read inside uh, our studio and that is going to be let me go to the thing I saved somewhere video tutorials and I should be having data do I have data intro to R no or I guess yeah data here I have uh, a sample behavior data set which I'm going to open and show this is just a CSV file which means comma separated value file um, because we need to save or uh, suppose if you have data in Excel file then better you save that as in the form of a CSV file R supports quite a few data file formats but uh, since uh, R belongs to a particular a uh, family of uh, software applications called open source software so it is always better to save your data sets in open source data formats and CSV is one of the open source data formats uh, this is the data uh, let me explain you what is this data this data is actually uh, I mean it deals with the behavioral properties of some sample individuals and if you observe very closely it has two important parts the very first uh, section of the data deals with socioeconomic uh, characteristics of the sample individuals and there are a few variables which belongs to study characteristics if you observe very closely we have a few variables such as gender age salary family these are all socioeconomic profile I mean these variables represent uh, social economic profile of the sample individuals and here there are few variables like SAT1, SAT2, SAT3 kind of thing and these are all uh, this is actually a factor which uh, represents uh, a particular phenomenon called satisfaction that is why I just assigned a name SAT and by the way I yeah and this is a factor uh, this factor has three variables and uh, uh, if you observe the name of the variable it is actually PER1 kind of th this three variables represents a factor called perception these three variables represent a factor called attitude and this is what is the data and it is in CSV file now if you observe very closely mm, you see here we have categorical data and we also have non-categorical I mean categorical data but numerical this is not this is categorical non numerical this is categorical but numerical so this is what is the distinction between these two sections of uh, I mean these two you can say parts of the data file now I'm going to show you how to get this uh, data inside R I explained you this in my previous uh, demonstrations I will explain there are different ways to do that but I'm going to use a very shortcut uh, method I call uh, my data because uh, it is always I have the habit of attaching this my my to every because data is very valid name inside uh, or so so that is actually it's a silly thing but uh, read uh, CSV and then file choose so you have different ways but I I use this particular function inside read CSV which is again a function now when we press 
enter now R is going to open a window we have to drill down to that particular uh, thing I have I need to go rather where do I have that uh, video tutorials or data yes shit and then yes now R is silent which means it does some work my data then this is what is the data which we had a glance just a minute before and now you can just perform the descriptive statistics just by issuing this command summary and now you'll get all descriptive statistics now this is what is the descriptive gender has two levels there are eight instances of female seven something like this I discussed all these things in my one of my previous videos in this video I'm going to show you how to convert let us pick up a particular shall we take gender yes now my data and then you have many things uh, to get gender you can do this you can also this is called uh, array fashion and you can also do the same thing by uh, by using indexing that is the gender is the first column so if you issue you are going to get like this uh, you can also do in a different I mean there are many ways to do this but uh, this is very intuitive and also easy to get uh, now I'm going to use this particular notation in order to convert this into numeric data this is non numeric but categorical there are two categories here male and female now suppose if I want to convert that into numeric at categorical then we can go we have a function called uh, if else now let me clean my I still have uh, my data and gen gender uh, if else my data gender is equal to male then assign one else two because we have only two categories here so automatically anything other than male that will be given to so female is going to be two and male is going to be one now you see we converted that into a beautiful numeric variable but still it is categorical where one is male and two is female. we can cross check this and surely it should be identical with uh, the variable gender now we can save this into a, I mean suppose we can we are not just going to leave this as it is and it is better to create an object and uh, use a defined object and I call it as gender and now take all this you know decoded data encoded data into this uh, I'm sorry gender create a variable it create a variable or just this is a user defined object I'm just going to create a user defined object with the name gender and whatever is there here I'm just going to save that in this object okay now gender is going to have the same variable now you can go for mean gender I think it, I cannot compute the mean because it is mean is not meant for category this is actually the I can say more than nominal but less than ordinal kind of data we cannot go for let's say 1.53 is it has no meaning for gender so uh, don't worry about the mean I just wanted to compute and show you so since it is I, I mean this variable now we converted this non numeric um, variable into numeric variable now it has some numeric value inside it that is what I just wanted to demonstrate now let us pick up one of the names names of my data now you see let us pick up uh, some you know, numerical data sat one okay now my data my data or my data my data I think my data yes now sat one now we see this is just a uh, numerical data you can just uh, go for count is not the sum of uh, sat, no, mean sat is not that is not meaningful but you, know, you can just go for some thing some should be there okay we have that in sum of uh, okay we'll go for maximum that is rather more meaningful instead of some mm, five so that is obviously so this is actually this satisfaction this particular there are three uh, variables 
which represents a factor called satisfaction. Now this is the first variable and in, in this variable you see there are levels and this is the ordinal data. One stands for maybe highly dissatisfactory and five stands for a high, high level of satisfaction, some kind of highly satisfactory, something like that. Three stands for indifferent or neither satisfactory nor dissatisfactory kind of thing. Now how are we going to uh, code it? If else, let me clear my console. If else, now I think I have that here, right? Yeah, maximum. I use if else my data set one is equal to uh, let's say one, then the value is going to be highly dissatisfied. Okay. Think. Uh, think here it should be yes. Yeah, dissatisfied. If else, this is the difference between. I think I'm using uh, different logic here. If the same, this my data set one is equal to two, then it is going to be. It is just like uh, if else statement inside Excel will be. Now it is two, right? Uh, if it is two, then it is going to be uh, dissatisfied. And then I copy this. Uh, and then I use the same uh, this is going to be 3 now this is going to be indifferent indifferent and now else copy same statement and then this is going to be 4 so we need to continue this satisfied till the end of the else in else position we are just copying this the five then it is going to be highly satisfied satisfied I think it is okay now oh uh, we did a mistake now let's see where we did highly satisfied uh, our argument no is missing with no default yeah somewhere we did uh, let us go back and troubleshoot our statement if uh, satisfaction is 1 then highly is if uh, highly satisfied yeah I think uh, we come here the last one is the problem 5 highly dissatisfied else what so we have to tell so instead of this we can just uh, ignore this 5 and we can stop here if uh, else my data set 1 is 4 satisfied else highly satisfied so that is going to be again there is a problem let's yeah this time I did I must be doing uh, let's see this we have to, this is the lower level bracket and this is a bit high this is a bit high this is uh, yeah I think we have everything is okay right mm, satisfied I is satisfied Ex unexpected yeah right I yes so mistakes are common and uh, we learn uh, by doing mistakes and uh, uh, I was trying to do the mistakes uh, while I mean using logic as well as I also did a typo while um, I mean fulfilling uh, I mean uh, satisfying the open and closing while opening and closing the I didn't able to satisfy the logic by through my uh, parenthesis kind of thing now anyway okay we did some let us not so this is how we can just uh, decode uh, but uh, this time I just do one thing uh, sat one uh, okay I will try to save this I create a user defined object and then now it is I'm going to sat one is this now type of because sat one character that is not going to be we need to convert that into a factor because this is anyway a factor mm. as let's us mm, first let me test as factor sat1 is it yeah correct so we can convert that into sat1 is as factor um, sat is it sat1 yeah of course sat1 yes now type of sat1 now it is integer oh my god cannot be an integer sat1 
uh, is factor sat one yeah true it is a factor levels as long as it is factor we don't have any problem with that yeah levels are there are one two three four five levels as usual so we have five uh, uh, level scale i mean actually this variable is measured by using Likert scale so this way we can just uh, uh, create we can also create the user different functions uh, for this uh, type of activities but uh, that is too much for these videos mm, a generic function which can be used on and on uh, in order to whenever you have some incoming data you can just use that generic function to convert numeric into but it should be categorical in both cases kind of thing okay anyway this is for this video um, thanks for watching this video stay tuned to the new content and also subscribe to my video channel if you like my video please press like button thank you